Okay, today is May 30th, 2022, and we have a very special guest on the show today, Dr. Fred Emembe. Dr. Emembe is a revolutionary, a lawyer, an economist, a journalist, an accountant, um, an advocate of the High Court and Supreme Court of Zambia. And Dr. Emembe is the president of the Socialist Party of, of Zambia. Dr. Emembe is also renowned for his editorship of the Zambia Post and has received a number of international awards for his courageous journalism and activism. In 1995, Dr. Membe received the Media Institute of Southern Africa's Press Freedom Award, and he won the International Press Freedom Award of the Committee to Protect Journalists, which is an annual recognition of courageous journalism. In 2000, the International Press Institute named him one of, the, of only 50 uh, World Press Freedom Heroes, uh, and the Media Institute of Southern Africa uh, described Fred Membe as the most persecuted journalist in his country and the entire region. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Membe, for coming on the show, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk to you about was the conflict in Ukraine. Um, since Since February 2022, um, the U.S. media has really restricted alternative perspectives on the conflict, um, and it's even more rare that we hear perspective from someone outside of the U.S. Um, what is your perspective for how the conflict in Ukraine started? This is a conflict that could have been avoided. From 2008, it was very clear that the USA was up to no good in Ukraine. NATO was pushing closer and closer to the Russian border, making it so difficult for Russia to defend itself in case of an attack. The time was reduced for which, you know, NATO missiles could hit most of Russia. The Russians complained. The Russians tried to appeal to NATO, to the USA for restraint. They were not listened to. We don't think the USA could have allowed any other country, Russia or China, to put up missiles in Mexico or Canada. We know this, they refused the Soviet Union to put up missiles in Cuba, which they don't have a direct border with. There's 90, 90 kilometers apart, or 90 miles apart. But they insisted on positioning themselves in Ukraine and trying to turn Ukraine into a member of NATO. Russia had to defend itself. I don't think it's a war or it's a conflict. Russia went into it happily or willingly. It was the last resort. We don't want wars. We wish that conflict could have been resolved peacefully. We still even wish up to now that that war stops tomorrow and the issue is resolved peacefully. We don't want a world of wars. But here is a country that has got more bases beyond its borders than any other country in the world. They have got bases literally all over the world than any other country. Who is threatening them? Who is much more of a threat to the other? Russia is not much more of a threat than the USA is a threat to Russia. Russia doesn't have bases all over. Doesn't have troops stationed in so many countries near other countries. There are no troops stationed near the USA, foreign troops or bases near the USA, none. Yes, we respect and accept the right of the USA to defend itself. 
but also they should respect the rights of others to defend themselves. The concerns about the security of the USA are they concerned about the security of every other country, big or small? All countries in the world deserve to have their security. Let the USA secure itself, but also it must allow others to secure themselves. We can say the war in Ukraine today has been caused by the USA and NATO, and they are responsible for that. They left Russia with no options. And, and how does the conflict in Ukraine fit into the, the colonial and imperial history of NATO and the US, particularly um, and, and the, throughout the continent of Africa? NATO today cannot hide its intentions, its expansionist, expansionism. NATO and the USA are the same. NATO was started by NATO by, by, by the, by the NATO was started by the USA in 1949. Are a way to try and use Europe to advance American interests? They have succeeded in that. We have seen NATO being used now in other countries, in Afghanistan. NATO went into Libya, African soil. Far beyond its original mandate, far beyond its original intentions. NATO is involving itself in wars that have got nothing to do with the threat on Europe. Libya was not a threat on Europe. Libya threatened Europe in no way, or any NATO member in no, in any, it didn't threaten any NATO member in any way. The USA today, with some NATO members, are setting up bases all over the world, including on Africa. Today we have the issue of Africa. The USA can reach any country in Africa within five minutes. They can hit any country in Africa within five minutes. They have got the biggest drone base in West Africa. They are trying to militarize everything, to weaponize everything. International relations today are being weaponized. It's not good for the USA. It's not good for any other country. It's not good for humanity. We are seeing a build up of another Cold War, which we don't want. We have lived under a Cold War before. We don't want another Cold War. We have lived in a bipolar world. We thought it was bad. Today we are living in a unipolar world. It's worse. And you mentioned AFRICOM. Um, Af AFRICOM has expanded even into Zambia. Is that is that correct? Yes. They have set up an office, which we know from the, the Ghanaian experience, that there's no difference between an office and a base. And what what about, no, continue. What, yeah, what interests are they pursuing here? What, is, what security considerations do they have in Zambia? How is the USA threatened by what goes on in Zambia? We don't need American troops, American bases, or of military offices in Zambia. We don't need. We can cooperate with the USA in many things. No country can tackle all its problems by itself. Not even the USA itself. It needs the cooperation of others, but not in this way. We know wherever the USA has had bases, 
has had a military presence, there have been problems. And who are they trying to protect here? It's not our protection. It's an advancement, an advancement of American interest. And we know why they are so interested in setting up military or expanding their military capacities here. It's because of the strategic minerals we hold. Zambia and DRC hold 70% of the world's cobalt reserves. We have copper here, which is a strategic, which is one of the strategic minerals for the future technologies, especially electric cars. We understand why they want their troops here. We have been subjected to this before. Our whole colonization was about minerals. And it was also done with armies. Cecil Rhodes, who first colonized our country in 1891, had an army in Kota in what is now Malawi. And he used that army against our people. Our people had to fight a war with Cecil Rhodes' army from December 1897 to the 4th of February 1898. Our people had to defend themselves. 10,000 killed, including their leaders and our chiefs. So we know from history what the presence of American troops mean to us here. It's not to keep our sovereignty. It's not to give us peace. They are here to pursue American interests, which are not necessarily our interests. American interests are American interests. We also have our own interests. And we have the right to have our own interests. And it's our duty to secure our own interests. It's not American duties to secure our own interests. See, who appointed America the world policeman? Who? Which UN charter gives them that right? Which AU charter gives them that right? Yeah, and the, the, I guess that leads to another question is, you know, that you've kind of outlined the U.S.'s role uh, throughout the continent of, of Africa. Um, what has what has been China's role in comparison? Because in the U.S., we hear a lot of anti-China propaganda that you know China is, is putting several African countries in, in into a debt trap. Um, but what is the what is the difference between U.S. and European intervention throughout the continent of Africa and Zambia in particular um, compared to that of China? Firstly, let's go back to history. China has never colonized any other country in the world. China has never fought a war since the Korean War in any other country. Yes, there are a few border disputes here and there with its neighbors, but that's all. How many wars has the USA and its allies fought since World War? in other countries. Sometimes countries that are so poor, countries that are so militarily weak, they invaded Iraq without a UN resolution. They went into Afghanistan. They went into Libya, Somalia, Vietnam, we know their role in Kosovo. Where has China ever fought a war? Where? Which country has ever been invaded by, Russia, by, by China? Which country in Africa has ever been colonized? or anywhere in the world colonized by China. China was a colony itself, which had to liberate itself from Japanese imperialism. The Chinese fought for their, for their, for their freedom, for their sovereignty. 
Even when we were fighting for our independence, firstly, who were we fighting for our independence from? The allies of the USA and the USA itself. Who was on the side of our oppressors? Here in Southern Africa, who was on the side of apartheid? The USA. They vetoed every resolution that was being passed to condemn apartheid. To condemn minority regimes. They supported Portuguese colonialism in Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde. The Americans were with them. How many coups have the Americans participated in in Africa? How many of our leaders have the USA killed or toppled? Their only revelations now show that they participated in the killing of Patis Lumumba. We can safely say the USA killed our leader, Patrick Lumumba. For what? For just trying to maintain the sovereignty of the Congo to ensure that its minerals saved the interests of, and the, uh, the, interests of the Congolese people. They participated in the toppling of Nkrumah. The list is endless. And it's not only in Africa. Look at Latin America. How many governments, legitimate governments, have they toppled? Has China ever done anything like that? The USA today can be concerned about protecting us from China when they never protected us from colonialism. They never even protected us from apartheid. What injustice has the USA ever protected us from? They are, it's their own interest they are trying to save in Africa and not our interests. They are worried about our cooperation with China because they think China will take over the strategic minerals we possess. That's all. It's not about us, it's about themselves. So we shouldn't be deceived. There's no interest of Africa that the USA is trying to protect. They are advancing and protecting their own interests. And the American interests are not our interests. We don't have imperial interests. We don't have hegemonistic interests. There's no African country that has gone to exploit any other country in the world. There's no African country that has ever colonized another country outside of this continent. We are not a threat to America. China is not a threat to America. China is trying to advance its economic interests. It's trying to build up an economy. And in fact, we have more beneficial relationship to the China than we, have had, than we have had with these imperialist countries. The US on top. Yes, we owe China, but doesn't the USA owe China? Who owes more China? Of China? The USA owes more money to China than any other country in the world. The US is more indebted to China than any other country in the world. Is China going to colonize the USA? Hmm? Is China on the verge of colonizing the USA, which owes it more money than anybody in the world? Yes, we owe money to China. But we also owe money to them. Yeah, and it's, it's ironic that the US owes China so much money and is, is in debt to China at the same time, you know, they're, they're threatening uh, military aggression against China and, and, and while bar, borrowing money for China to fund these wars. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's absurd um, uh, hypocrisy. Um, but I guess to, um, my understanding is that, the, that Zambia has significant foreign debt 
um, and that China has some of that debt uh, or, or some of that debt is owed to China. But what is the what is the difference in terms of pressures f from the different foreign debt that that, uh, that exists in Zambia? If we we were only indebted to China, we would go to sleep without worry. The pressure that is there is the euro bonds we owe. It's the debt that we have with Western institutions. It's not with China. China can never declare, declare bankrupt. The threat is from the Western institutions we owe. But they want to put all the burden on China. They want China to be the burden bearer. Putting even conditionalities on lending us more money from the IMF on what we do with China. Trying to blackmail China into changing its debt conditions or debt agreements with us. And in many cases, in many respects, China has cooperated to ensure that, you know, the burden on us is lessened. China is not an imperial country. China is not our colonizer. China does not threaten, as has never threatened our sovereignty. The opposite is true. It's them who always threaten our sovereignty. It's them who have robbed us for centuries. These are people who have taken us as slaves. And today they are coming back to tell us they are our liberators. For 500, 600 years, they have humiliated us. They have exploited us. They have dehumanized us. Today they wanted to pose as our liberators as our very caring brothers and sisters, we are not fools. China has never done to us what they have done to us. They took us as commodities, they traded us as commodities, shipped us across the Atlantic as commodities. We have never recovered from that. We are still suffering the effects of that. China is not a neo-colonial power. They are neo-colonialists themselves. They are the neo-colonialists. We can debate these issues with the facts. We can put the facts, the figures on the table. And it will show who is the colonizer. Who is the neo-colonizer. They want to create a fear among us of China. China is in a win-win relationship with us. Sometimes, yes, we have not negotiated well with Chinese enterprises. Yes, there are also some bad behavior among Chinese foreign capital. But that's not the state policy of China. China is not an imperial state. China is not seeking hegemony. Give it to them. They have done very well to improve their economy, cooperating with all the other countries in the world. The USA itself is a big beneficiary from Chinese progress. They are doing business with China. They have borrowed money from China. And they want you know, us to fear China when they themselves they don't fear China. It won't happen. We are not fools. We have been fooled long enough. And, you know, coming back to the topic of Ukraine, what is your assessment of what is preventing peace uh, in, in the conflict? NATO and the USA. They have a puppet regime in Ukraine. Let's not forget that the legitimate government of that country was toppled by the same people. 
the USA participated in the toppling of the government in Ukraine. Ukraine has not known peace or independence or sovereignty since 2008. They were building military installations in Ukraine. They shouldn't lie. And those were the first targets of Russia when the war started or the conflict started. They knocked most of them out. So the war in Ukraine should end and should end peacefully. If they can leave the Ukrainians to realize that, you know, it's in their best interest to sit down with Russia and end this war. The conditions that Russia is putting, the demands of Russia are legitimate. The USA would not accept them if they were on the opposite side. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, those are all the questions I have for you for today. Is there anything else you want to add before we finish? No, thank you very much. We'll have another interview another time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been a true honor just to meet you and to learn from you um, and hope to have you back on the show soon. Thank you very much.